Good day, everyone, and welcome to the BizLaunch webinar on Is Your Business Waterproof? We are glad that you will be spending your lunch with us this afternoon. And I think it's perfect because if you look out your window, it's gray and it looks like some water might be coming down and you are in the right place to spend your lunch with us. That said, we're going to jump into the presentation. We are very pleased to have with us this afternoon Emily Jane McLaughlin, who is with the Office of Public Safety Communications and Emergency Management. Uh, businesses should be prepared, no matter if it's a natural disaster or if it's something that has happened that has prevented your, you from you being able to do your work and to do your business. And it's something that we see quite a bit in this launch. Um, we try to have people plan as much as possible because I believe the more of a strategy and a plan that you have in place in case of a disruption, the better you are to be able to respond when something suddenly happens to you. And I'm so very glad and we're so fortunate to have Emily Jane and her expertise to walk us through what are some of the things that we need to do when things happen to our businesses. And just a little bit of, of housekeeping. We want to talk to you about how to enjoy today's webinar. First of all, you have to know that it's not just me and Emily Jane. We also have my colleague Ben Akins, who's on the line who will also be answering your questions. And you may be wondering, well, how do I ask my question? All you have to do is raise your hand and type in the box. So if you can't hear us, or if you want an elaboration about a subject that we're talking about, um, feel free to type in your questions. We'll make sure that we answer them at the end of the webinar. So if you want to do it right away or if you want to do it when we get to towards the end of the webinar, that will be great too. Another burning question that you may be having that's in your mind is whether or not you'll be able to relive this amazing webinar or get a copy of the presentation materials. And I am here to say that by the end of this week, so by Friday, it will be up on our Arlington Economic Development website as a webinar resource tool. So you can relive this moment uh, Wednesday, May 30th and get all the information in case you've missed some pertinent information. It will live on in infamy. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the presentation over to my friend and colleague, Emily Jane, who will be talking all about Is Your Business Waterproof This Lunch Hour? Emily Jane, thanks so much for joining us. Great. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me during your lunch hour. Um, we're going to sort of go through some slides here that are going to talk about who I am, what organization I come from, um, what some case studies are that relate to business emergency planning, and sort of what we can do as my department, the Department of Public Safety, Communications, and Emergency Management, as well as um, in conjunction with Arlington Economic Development to help get our businesses waterproof. So I want to start with some challenge questions here. Um, the first one, if your facility had to close right now, would you be able to access all of your critical, doc critical documents? How would you be able to gain access to them? Do you know exactly what you would need to be doing for this to happen? Do your important staff members who might need to access them, do they have the instructions on how to access them? Could you stay in business if your primary facility was closed right now? If you couldn't, how long would you be able to stay in business? Do you have other locations where, your where you could transfer your primary operations? So sort of a, a more facility tangible space question. And then finally, do you have a communications plan with your staff in the event that your primary facility is closed right now? What would you tell them? What would you let them know? Do they know what the expectation is? Do they know that they should go to telework immediately and get back to work or do they have the rest of the day off? How would you communicate what your work expectations are for them? So these are some sort of overarching general questions, and I think as we move through the presentation, we're going to find some answers or at least find some sort of validation as to why they're really important questions. Um, these are 
everyday challenges. They happen to businesses large and small. You don't have to be worried about a hurricane. You can be worried about something as simple as a pipe breaking. And during some of the case studies I mentioned before, we're really going to sort of focus in on these are small everyday activities that can really put a damper in your ability to run your business. So first, let me give you a little bit of perspective on my professional experience and my role in Arlington County and my department's mission. So I have been working in emergency management for several years. Prior to my role at Arlington County, I was um, working at FEMA's headquarters in continuity of government planning. So I worked with federal departments and agencies to make sure that they um, were prepared for the type of events that we're talking about right now. Um, so... Sorry, that was some technical difficulties on my side. Um, so, okay, so who are we? As I said, we're the Department of Public Safety, Communications, and Emergency Management. So there are two parts to our department. The first part is 911. If you call 911 in Arlington County, you're calling our department. We operate a 24-7 call center that answers the 911 calls and dispatches fire and police resources to the community. Part of the Emergency Communication Center is also the nine emergency phone line. So as you can see on this card, there's two parts to it. There's 911, which we just talked about, and you can always text to 911 in Arlington County. It's in a program that's intended to be used in any instance where you believe life or property is in danger, but you don't feel safe enough to be able to make a phone call. So you can always use the text to 911 system. So always err on the side of caution with 911, we say also. Um, if you um, have an incident that is not threatening life or property, but you still need to engage with police or something about a police report, um, things along those lines, please call our non-emergency line. The phone number for that is 703-558-2222. Um, and just like 911, that phone number is always staffed. But as I said before, if you are ever in doubt, always call 911. Okay, so the other part of our department is the Emergency Management Division, and that is where I work. So we work to create community resilience to help the Arlington County community recover from an emergency event quickly while minimizing loss of life and damage to property. Our mission is to coordinate emergency preparedness and response capabilities, resources, and outreach for the Arlington County community. So really what this means is we work to create community resilience to help the whole Arlington County community recover from an emergency event. So part of the emergency management division is the watch desk, which is what you can see on the screen here. So the watch desk monitors and gathers information from many different sources, social media, you know, news feeds, camera feeds. Um, they manage and collect that information and inform the public through the Arlington Alert System. And they also inform fire police and emergency medical services of potential risks, actual risks, threats, ongoing incidents in the region. Um, the watch officer serves as the notification point of contact for both internal and external communications, so internal within the county in the event there's an emergency, as well as within the community. So the watch officer is responsible for managing the employee public alerting system, um, as well as Arlington Alert. If you are not an Arlington Alert subscriber, we strongly recommend you subscribe. You can Google Arlington Alert or go to Ready Arlington and you can find all of our information and sign up that way. So a little bit more about the Emergency Management Division. Um, we help the public be prepared through the Arlington Alert messaging system and other outreach events with a special focus on at-risk populations. So we partner with a lot of different organizations in the county. One of the biggest partnerships and strongest partnerships we have is with AFAC. Um, and then of course we also have the partnership that we are sort of displaying right now with Arlington Economic Development. So we really try and get out into the community and reach populations that we wouldn't normally reach um, to make sure that all parts of the county are prepared and informed about emergency events. We work within the Arlington County government to make sure that all of the departments, um, especially those with critical functions, are prepared to handle all hazard events. So we have the emergency operations plan. We have the comprehensive emergency um, management program. Um, these are core documents that we've produced. They're available on our website, um, which is part of the Arlington County website system that you can go and look up and get sort of a, a general sense of how we handle emergency events, how we would respond to them. 
Um, we also work within the national capital region. Um, we work with our partners in D.C. and Maryland, as well as our counterparts in other jurisdictions in Virginia, um, to make sure that we as a county are represented in regional plans and that we also can contribute to developing best practices for these regional plans. Um, we then bring those best practices back into our work within Arlington County and make sure that um, the departments we work with are um, functioning at the highest possible level and really are cutting edge in the work that they're doing. So those are all things that we do. We are adding a new element to our focus, and that is we are turning our focus to engage with the Arlington County business community. So why are we doing that now? First of all, we are reinvigorating this mission. We have had some staff turnover in the past few years, and this program sort of um, became discontinued temporarily. And now that we have new staff there, new staffing levels, we are, we are reinvigorating it. We are picking it up where we left off, and we are running with it. Um, there's also the Waffle House theory, or it's also known as the Waffle House Index. It is a, an indicator system from FEMA that I'm going to talk about in just a second. Um, but it really goes into detail as to how important it is to use businesses to take the temperature of a community after an emergency event. And then third, why now? There have been a lot of recent events, and we're going to talk through a handful of them. Um, one of them that we're going to focus on is the Ellicott City floods, which I'm sure all of you um, are aware of. Um, and we're going to go talk about that in a little bit more detail, but there are a lot of examples uh, you know, even in just the last few weeks of incidents that don't have to be major situations, though they definitely can be, that can really impact your ability to do your business in your um, in your office space or wherever you primarily have your business functioning. Okay, Waffle House Index. This is a fully functioning, fully operational Waffle House. The theory is that, um, and this came from the previous administrator of FEMA, Craig Fugate. Um, he, he took the perspective that if you looked at the operating status of your local Waffle House, this is a good way to tell the true impact of an emergency event on a community. So there are three levels to the index. The first is green, which is what you're seeing here. This is fully functional, no damage, serving a full menu, full staffing levels. They are, they are good to go. They are not impacted by a, an emergency event. And then you get to yellow. So not the worst case scenario. This is the second level. Um, this means that there's a limited menu. There's no power, or if there is power, it's supplied by a generator. Um, the yellow level means that the food supplies might be low. Um, partially that's due to um, like supply lines, delivery systems that have been disrupted in the region because of this severe or the emergency event. Um, and usually there's reduced staffing. Um, because of the widespread damage in the community, people need to, to be with their families and at their homes rather than come into work. And then we've got red. So this is the worst case scenario. This is when the restaurant is closed, indicating that there is severe damage to the facility or the surrounding community. There is limited damage. There can be limited damage to the structure itself, but the whole surrounding area is, is very, very badly damaged. It also indicates that staffing would be non-existent and that food supplies would be depleted. Okay, so, so what? Well, the Waffle House Index demonstrates the resilience of a community. This is defined by the Department of Homeland Security as the ability to ad adapt to changing conditions and withstand and rapidly recover from disruption due to emergencies. As a core indicator system for FEMA, the Waffle House Index de demonstrates the importance of the business community in taking the temperature of the community status. When businesses can get back to business, the community can work towards returning to pre-event conditions or creating a new normal. Let's take a look at some recent examples. Okay, so we're gonna go over the Pulse nightclub shooting, the Ellicott City floods, 2016 and 2018, and then three Arlington specific incidents that have occurred in the last six months. Okay, so we have the Pulse nightclub shooting. Um, this occurred in September of 2016. There was a really informative Wall Street Journal article written about six months afterwards titled, Arling or, sorry, titled Orlando Shootings Economic Costs Mount. Um, there are a few quotes that I pulled from this. Um, 
One is that just three blocks from Pulse, a Chipotle restaurant's parking lot was transformed into a media center hosting law enforcement conferences for four days. So to me, that means that that Chipotle was closed for four days, at least. Um, they weren't able to have customers come and park in their parking lot. They weren't able to receive deliveries, most likely. Um, there are a lot of things that were inhibiting their ability to operate their business as normal. And so I present this just to put the question out there is, how would your business adapt if this is what you experienced? Um, another business there said that the street across, sorry, they were located across the street from the police perimeter. It was an Ace Hardware store. They were able to stay open, but the number of customers they had on a daily basis fell from 100 a day to 350 a day. Mm -hmm. So that's a really significant drop off in foot traffic coming through your store. So then we have Ellicott City flood. Mm -hmm. So this is a photo from the uh, first flood, the one that took place July 30 in 2016, where six inches of rain fell over over the course of two hours. Downtown Ellicott City was destroyed and two people died during the incident. The main street did not open to pedestrian or vehicle traffic for over two months. I was doing some research over the weekend for this presentation and it was as the, uh, the most recent, the 2018 floods were unfolding and I was immediately directed um, when I tried to learn more about what was happening to some of the um, Ellicott City Strong or Ellicott City flood recovery web pages. So I bring that up just to point out that it is a multi-year response effort to recover from incidents like this. Um, and so that's just something to, to keep in mind that um, they might have opened pedestrian traffic pretty quickly, but they took a significant amount of time um, to sort of recover from that. Here's a photo, this is from last weekend. Um, the there was a little bit of difference in this one. There were four, there were eight inches of rain that fell over 14 hours. This was a lot more water than fell in 2016, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that the damage here is is just from this photo looks a lot more significant from the other photos. Mm -hmm. So this is a catastrophic event. Um, it's it is something that will decimate a community and will take a lot of time and recovery effort to to bounce back from. Um, so this really is a worst case scenario. We wanna turn your attention to something that is a little bit more local and also a little bit, I hate to say it, more likely. Um, that is water main breaks or water pipe breaks. When I was putting this presentation together, I can't tell you how many different articles I came across with businesses that had to relocate because their HVAC unit leaked mm -hmm. or businesses that had to, you know, their sprinkler system went off accidentally and everything was just damaged and soaked in water and they had to sort of recover from that. So um, ARL Now, according to their Twitter feed, had a, quote, flash flood in Clarendon at their offices on May 14th. So I'm going to go out of the PowerPoint for a second just to show you um, and in the, the graphic for their flood, which is pretty powerful. So you can see the water coming down from the ceiling right there, through the dusting, through where the electrical work is. Um, you can see a lot of water on the floor there. So that's a pretty substantial um, flood situation that you've got going on. Um, so Let's take another look at another flood. Okay, so Arlington County office building flood. So this happened at 2020 14th Street. Um, this facility includes the county's 24 hour homeless shelter. They experienced a flood um, a few weeks back, probably in the middle of May. According to the article, a water pipe on the top floor broke causing damage to the whole building, but thankfully there was no impact on the services at the shelter though county employees who were working on the first and fifth floors were forced to relocate. One of those groups um, came across the street to my office. We're at 1400 North Ewell Street, um, and we have an emergency operations center there. So it's a room with a bunch of desks and computers and chairs. And they said, we need to keep working. We're under deadline on something, but we can't be in our space. Can we be here for a few days? And we said, yeah, absolutely. Unless something comes up, you can use our space. And ultimately they were there for a few hours until they found a more suitable space. 
Um, but they really lucked into that because they all had their computers with them. So they were able to be very portable as they had to leave their their home office and go to other locations. If they didn't have their computers or if their computers were damaged, they, they would have been in a much tougher shape. So that's something to keep in mind. And then another ARL Now article, um, flooding closes the courthouse gym Chamber of Commerce office. So last December, a burst water pipe in an apartment building um, and the resulting flood forced the offices for the Arlington Chamber of Commerce and the next phase fitness studio to close for an extended time period. The article states that the water, quote, started pouring into all the offices monsoon style, end quote. Um, quick thinking by chamber staff, they scrambled to unplug and save their computers and they're currently, currently as of the writing of the article, we're working remotely as restoration efforts continue. So you can see in that photo that was clearly taken through a window, there's a lot of equipment out on the floor there and that is drying equipment, trying to, to dry out the carpet so that like mildew and mold doesn't grow. Um, if any of you have ever had a flood in your home, which I did experience in the last year, those machines are so loud. You cannot work around them like it is that is a space that just cannot be occupied. And, and the staff, they were really smart to unplug their computers and disconnect their computers and keep them away from the water. So I just talked with you about some of the different things that can go wrong, how they can happen pretty easily. Um, so how can businesses support community resilience? What can businesses do to prepare to respond to these types of events? So we got three core highlights here. One is backups back things up. Using the cloud is great, um, but you need to have things in a second space. So if you have it on your hard drive, great. Make sure you also back up to your cloud. And we mean things like all of your documents and your records, but you know, receipts. Think about things that are um, maybe not historical information for you yet, but like documents that you are actively using. Contracts for a, you know, a, something you're taking delivery of in the next week. You need really all of your documents to make sure that they are in a secondary location, to make sure that you are really prepared. Um, and backups are only as good as the amount of frequency that you back them up. So you could have a backed up drive and say, well, only once a month do I back things up. Well, what happens when you're three weeks into that month and you haven't yet backed up? You, you're gonna lose everything for the previous three weeks. So making sure you really build that in um, as a best practice is something that's really important to do. Okay, contacts. Make sure you have information about your vendors, your insurance agents, and your clients, and make sure that's easily accessible. Especially make sure that you can communicate with your staff. And this is something I brought up during the challenge question um, at the beginning of the presentation, is that they need to know what they should be doing next, and they're gonna turn to you for direction. So taking some time to play out, you know, who's gonna call who? Do people automatically just go to telework, or do people automatically take other steps to support the business, you know, making sure they know those things ahead of time is, is going to make a really chaotic situation run a lot more smoothly. It's gonna help you maintain and even build strong relationships with your clients and your customers. And then the final bullet is plans. So making a plan to deal with an emergency is the best way to get back to business. So make sure you can bounce back quickly for an emergency event, regardless of the impacts of your business. And this can be done through business continuity planning. So what is this in continuity planning? Well, we'll talk to you about that. So the first thing I wanna to touch on is, what I said earlier is my department, the Department of Public Safety, Communications and Emergency Management, we are turning our focus to the business community. Um, and we have launched the Public-Private Partnership Program as a framework or as an initiative to really organize these different efforts. Um, the program mission is to do a few things. So to enhance situational awareness, we want to have a better understanding of the ground truth after an emergency event. You know, we want to know what CVS is open in South Arlington or off of Glebe, are there any restaurants open right now? So think of that like during a snowstorm, like we need to, we want to find ways that we can sort of take the temperature or get the pulse of the community um, and creating these relationships is what we think will help us do that. You know, one, so we can you know, share with the community who is open, but also, you know, say, well, wow, there are a lot of people who are still closed. We need to really send the message that people need to stay off the streets so we can keep plowing, things along those lines. 
Um, we want to have improved decision making and access to more resources. So this really means, you know, what I said before to a certain extent, we want to have a better understanding of the ground truth. And we also want to know who can share resources. If we have a way to sort of all communicate and we say, well, we have a business that's on Lee Highway and we, they don't have any fault and it's a snowstorm, but we know that a store around the corner, they just checked in with us and said they're, they've plowed everything out and that they have extra salt, we can put the two in touch. And if they want to, they can work something out and they can sh sort of share those resources. Um, we want to have a greater reach for our message. We, we want to, to amplify our messages of preparedness and mitigation and personal preparedness through the community in new ways and to a greater extent. And I think interacting with the business community will really help facilitate us doing this. Um, and we just generally need better coordination with the private sector. Um, sometimes we will need resources, you know? Sometimes we'll need, you know, more snow plows and we, we don't have enough. Um, or we're gonna need something else that's more specialized. And if we can reach out to the business community um, and share some of those resources, that only helps businesses get back to business quickly, kids get back to business quickly by going, you know, having schools back in session and the community as a whole move on and start to really recover from an emergency event. So to achieve these things, we need to have strong relationships with all of you. And that's what we are here to talk about today. So the first step in developing these capabilities. So when we consider these things, we talk about a severe snowstorm and a severe windstorm. Um, so keep that in mind as we go through this process, through this framework. So what I mentioned earlier, business continuity planning, which really is a way to prepare yourself and your business for an emergency event, is something that we wholeheartedly stand behind as um, other than backing your materials up and making sure you have a communications plan is really the best thing that you can do. So FEMA has placed significant emphasis on business continuity planning in recent years. Ultimately, the goal is to maintain profitability for business, right? That's why everybody starts a business and runs a business. Um, developing a strong continuity plan is a critical step in being prepared to maintain or resume core functions in the event of an emergency event. The goal of continuity planning is to minimize the impact of an event on your business and allow you to get back to work faster. So I just mentioned critical business functions. What are those? So those are the functions and activities at the core of your organization's mission. Those that make up really what the organization is. So I have two examples. So if you are a government contracting company, your primary responsibility is to fulfill the contracts that you have with your stakeholders. You might have an HR department, you might have a, you know, business development department, you might have a, you know, community engagement department in your company. Those things are not part of your critical business functions. Those are extra things you do that help everything move forward, but that's really not what your core function is. Your core function is to execute those contracts. Another example is, is like a bar. Like you could have a regular bar that might serve food, but really at the core of it, they're a bar. So their critical business function is to continue selling beer and wine and alcohol. And food, if you're in an emergency type event or you're recovering from an emergency event, maybe they wouldn't be serving food because they're just focusing on what the core part of what their job is. So how can my department help? So business continuity is a difficult thing to understand at times. So we've tried to make it really simple. So I've created a very short business continuity plan template for businesses of all size to use. So it's, as I said before, it's short. It is written with context and instruction on how to complete each section. And it's written from the perspective of a staff member who is new to emergency preparedness, who doesn't know anything about continuity, and might not have a lot of time to dedicate to the task. So the document goes over the core elements of continuity and explains how to complete all of the sections. So the goal of the document is to be short and easy to read. We want it to be a guide to getting back to business and getting things back on track, regardless of the emergency event. So we could have an earthquake or a hurricane or you know, lots of other different types of situations, a water pipe break, all different scenarios but you would still use the same document and you'd still use it in the same way to get back to business. So it's a really versatile document. And did I say it was short and easy to do? I love if I, that. If I didn't, I want to reiterate that. It's short and easy to use. 
So at the end of the presentation, there is a slide that has my contact information on it. Um, please jot that down if you're interested in this, and I will make sure to send you over a copy of the plan. And we can also set up a meeting and a time to go through the document together, talk through it, and troubleshoot any questions that you might have. Can I just pipe in that that yeah. is a wonderful resource to have? I mean, because yeah. it's priceless to be able to have someone that's an expert to work with you for free. For free, yes. That very good four-letter word of free yeah. to help you with your continuity plan, and that's just awesome. So. Yeah. That was just my shameless plug. Yeah, we're very we're very excited to be able to offer it to the community. Um, we also see this as a great way for us to start building the relationships that we mentioned we wanted to develop before, um, for us to sort of get to know you and your business and how we can sort of work together and engage in that way. So the next thing, we've got Business Operations Center. So this is in the probably six months to one year phase, but I thought it would be really important to mention here to sort of start as a primer, sort of get people ready or comfortable with the idea of it. So we want to create a business operations center, a BOC, um, to facilitate communication and coordination with the private sector when the Arlington County Emergency Operations Center is activated. So the Emergency Operations Center is a centralized location where representatives from each Arlington County department come together to work when responding to an emergency event. Um, if there's another direct show or snowstorm, it's critical to have a representative from the fire department in the same room as a representative from Parks and Rec. They're the ones who are responsible for removing debris and things like that. So we come together in one location to make sure that everybody is communicating clearly with each other, we all are on the same page, and we can share resources really easily. So we want to do that with the business community. So the intent um, is for the box to support the government by identifying private sector resources that might be able to provide support through essentially having an existing vendor list or other sort of authorized sources. Um, we want to be able to communicate resource requests. You know, do you have a pallet of water? We have a team that might need that right now, but all the stores are closed. Maybe we could pick it up. Sort of conversations like that that are really informal and ad hoc um, but all work and move towards the greater mission of recovering from an emergency event and strengthening the Arlington County community. So here we are back towards the end. So these are the challenge questions that we talked about in the beginning. Is your, if your facility closed right now, would you be able to access all your critical documents? Mm. Could you stay in business if your primary facility was closed right now? If you could not, like how long could you survive being out of business? And do you have a communications plan for your staff in the event that your primary facility was closed right now? So these are the same questions I asked in the beginning. And I hope now, I sort of hope that you don't have the answers off the top of your head. But I hope you see the value in answering these questions. And I hope that you take the time to answer them. And it doesn't have to be a 50-page document where you write everything down and you have, you know, everybody's phone number and there's phone trees and all these different detailed things like that. But just starting the conversation with yourself and with your staff, um, starting to put together different pieces of what being prepared for your business looks like is really what we're trying to get at today. And if you need additional assistance with that, if you have any other questions, or if you want to copy that continuity plan and want to sit down and talk with us about what that really looks like, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, does anyone have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions? And I guess this is where we turn it over to Ben Aiken. Um, ben, if you could join us and let us know if anyone has any questions that is on the line. I also have questions for Emily Jane um, that I'd like to ask, but I definitely want to reach out to everyone else. So while we're waiting to hear from Ben, um, what are some of the quick things, Emily Jane, that a business yes, owner I'm can do me. in a very affordable way, outside, of course, meeting with you, something that I could implement right away that could yeah, help I did, I did that. do yeah, business proof my, um, my business? I can't Yeah, so it. The question was, 
what are some very affordable and easy things that businesses can do to sort of get ready now or, or quickly? Um, and so my response to that would be, I think using a cloud system to back up your files is a great first step and, and getting comfortable using that um, and making sure that all of your staff use that. Because um, if you just use your, your desktop computer or even a laptop, but a, but a physical computer is the only backup, I mean, I personally have spilled coffee all over a computer and <laughs> it happens easily, right? You know, these are things that, that are pretty common things and we would recommend really looking at alternatives and I would recommend cloud as, as the best sort of backup because you can set it so it automatically syncs. Um, other things are, you know, making sure that your staff know what they need to do in the event of emergency. And and yes, part of that is making sure that, you know, they know they need to evacuate the building if the fire alarms go off. They know where they're all going to meet up if they do have to evacuate. Um, but making sure that they know what their what they their core functions are, what they really need to be doing um, in the event of an emergency is something that I think is is really helpful and something that really just starts with the communication. And making sure that you have that in place with yeah. Paramount. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other question that I was thinking as as you were as you were going through, if there is, mm -hmm. and, and I think of this in the instance of Pulse nightclub, mm -hmm. something like that that's going on. I didn't have any. And there's a um, there's no, a. I don't want to ask any. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask. Hey Ben, we can totally hear you. She's been getting with businesses, and if she had any. Uh, ben can't hear me. But we'll just keep going on. But that in was, the instance of Pulse Nightclub, um, yeah, sure. if you have police and it's engaged in the scene and everything like that, how do you, when is the ability for you to be able to, for the business to be able to go on board and to be able to get back to business if there's like a police scene? Yeah, so that is ultimately a question for law enforcement. So the space around an event scene, like at Pulse, that was a very large um, crime scene. They have to essentially go through, collect all of the information. Um, and when they are done processing the crime scene, then the businesses can reopen. Um, with Pulse, it took a, a while and they had different mm. sort of levels of perimeter. So um, those companies and organizations, offices, I know they worked very closely with the um, city of Orlando's economic development office or their, mm -hmm. their business mm -hmm. engagement office. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to be a touchstone of information between law enforcement. Um, Cause it, in that instance, it wasn't just local law enforcement, it was mm -hmm. federal entities as well. So trying to gather that information was a really difficult task. Um, and, and sort of their economic development office really served as a, a conduit for that. Um, so it really is about getting the information and understanding because, it, you know, they will, it will be a crime scene. It will be an event that mm. takes a certain amount of time to be processed. And you really should. And th that always makes me think, like, in looking at what happened in Ellicott City, mm -hmm. what happened in some of these major areas, whether it's natural or man-made disaster, that having laptops and being in the cloud is, is so, and even to insurance, mm -hmm. like some of the things that maybe, if things are going well with the business that we may not think about. Right, right. Well. Tax documents is one of those ones that comes up and receipts that you can use for your tax deductions and things along those lines. If you only have hard copies of those, making sure that you have, you know, have digital versions of them, making sure that, mm. um, you know, as I said before, the cloud is a really easy solution. It is not the ultimate solution. There will be yeah. instances, there can always, you know, it's technology, it can always fail. Um, but the cloud is a really consistent, um, really stable, and also generally easy to use and usually very affordable solution to finding a secondary location to store your files. And you can really access them anywhere. And so, you know, you can go to a library computer and, and access your core documents that way. That's why we really advocate it's for it. It's a thought also, too, like, and I'm thinking, like, the incident with the chamber, and, you know, all of a sudden there's this flood, mm -hmm. and you're thinking, and it's smart on their part. They were able to get their computers. Mm -hmm. But what about alternative space options as well? Right. Um, so that there's a place, like, there's so many co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. My thought would be if you had somebody on dial or standby, in case you can't work remotely for a long as a long term solution, right? But at least this kind of way, 
Yeah, you know. absolutely. Um, I think that is a really important part of the plan is at least mentally sort of thinking, you know, well, I've got 15 staff members. Where could I go that has enough space? Starbucks is probably not it. No. Especially if your whole building is impacted, everybody is going to be at Starbucks. <laughs> you've got to come up with another location. You know, you've got to come up with another space. Um, and I think the co-working spaces are really great for that. Um, you know, I might, you know, turn to Arlington Economic Development, yeah, we can you know, and, and ask for a resource. You know, if it was my business, that's what I would do. If someone came to me and said that was their problem, I, I would send them to you guys because um, you have a really great sort of, you know, finger on the pulse of sort of what the situation is in Arlington and, and how to assist with that. And we can pull yeah. people. And I think there was the fire that happened in Virginia Square a few months ago, and that was the one thing. I, I don't think people had thought initially to get in touch with us, but we know the brokers, we know the people, the building management. And it was cool because that after the fire, many of the brokers that are repping these businesses, their first thought was, we want to help. How can we help? Mm -hmm. And so to kind of serve as that kind of conduit to help people with space. Um, and everybody that's out there listening, make sure that you have a space plan as well, because who knows, you know, your business never stops, but in, you don't want it to take you out. Right. And I think my friend Benekin has some questions yeah. for us as well. Thanks, Sarah. I just had one, one question for Emily Jane. Um, we wondered if, if and to what extent you had um, gotten traction with the business community in Arlington, and if you had a success story or two you'd like to share with us. That's a good question. Um, we are newer to this initiative. Um, we are only now just reinvigorating it. Um, and so we are really excited on continuing this journey. This is one of the first instances where I've been able to give this presentation. So. We are looking forward to really engaging with the business community and growing from that. Um, we were involved with the hotel, or sorry, pardon me, the Virginia Square um, office building fire, and we were able to support Tara and AED in talking with some of the different groups that were impacted by that um, and going through um, and gathering some information from them. So we have some you know, best practices, I think, that we've, we've gathered and we've um, added into this program. Um, but we're really, the program is in its infancy. So you can see my contact information up on the screen. If anyone has any, as I said before, comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions, any thoughts that we could add to this presentation or adjust how we're doing this to make it more successful, we really, really welcome it. Um, so please don't hesitate to, to reach out. And I think that what I was going to say is that this is just the beginning. Yes. And that there are going to be several more opportunities. I think that it's so important. Like we always talk about in economic development when we're working with new businesses about making sure you have your strategic plan and, you know, in case some things are to happen. But we, and, and, and it's usually insofar as like business development mm -hmm. and connecting and making sure if you're doing contracting or if you're a restaurant. But I think we have a natural proclivity not to think about if a disaster strikes. Right, right. And so the, instead of being in that kind of reactive mode, yeah. you can be completely proactive right. and take matters and say, well, this is my plan. Right, exactly. And, and the point of the examples that I showed that were Arlington specific is that these things can sort of happen to everybody. They're not, you know... The floods in Ellicott City, they've been saying they're once in a thousand year floods. We don't, you don't have to sort of wait for a thousand years for a water pipe to break in your office mm -hmm. building, right? These are far more common things. Um, they can happen to anybody and they're really difficult to prevent. And there are some really simple steps that you can take to mitigate the impact. And that's, you know, making sure you have your contacts backed up, making sure your files are backed up and developing a plan, talking with your staff and really coming up a way that if you had to leave your primary facility, you would be able to continue running your business. I love that. And it doesn't have to necessarily cost a lot of money. It doesn't at all. It's something that can be done really simply. You know, the backing your stuff up on the cloud, you know, you can use Google. That's a free service until you get to a certain storage point. But it's, it's very either no cost or very low cost. Um, and the rest of it is starting to have conversations with staff. Um, and your team. And then the other part of it is you can come and engage with us and we are a free service and we can mm -hmm. talk, talk through doing a continuity plan with you. 
Um, that's a, an easy document to complete. It is a light lift, and it is definitely intended for people who are not familiar with emergency management or continuity planning. So we made it really simple and really easily applicable. So somebody could say, and then everybody could have a copy of the plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that way you can execute, and everybody's on the same page. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My, like, dream world of business continuity planning, everyone would spend two hours once a year talking through the plan and saying, you know, you're, this is your job. In, in an event, this is what you're going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what you can expect mm -hmm. from me. Um, and really hashing out who does what, what role is, belongs to what person. Oh, that's a good um, yeah, so it's an, it's an easy thing to do, really. You could spend half a day writing the plan and then a few hours training the plan with your staff and, and that's really all you need to do for the year. You could definitely spend a lot more time. And you, you could really make this all, I think you could make it a full-time job. Oh, totally. Year, but um, there's definitely a scaled back version that still offers a huge amount of value, um, of value added to your organization. Now, one quick question that I had, and this is probably my last question, but I always worry about insurance mm -hmm. for small businesses. And I, and I think about Ellicott City, because my first thought is, it's really hard to get like flood insurance mm -hmm. and especially an area that's been flooded before because of, um, you know, it, it's got kind of a past history piece for the actuaries. They don't like that, I guess. But what do you do um, to make sure that as part of your continuity or your business planning that you have enough insurance to protect you? That is a great question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh -huh. I would suggest looking at the Small Business Administration. They have mm. a whole part of their website that is just focused to emergency preparedness and emergency response. Uh -huh. um, okay. So they have some quite, some helpful, more technical documents that I think would be really helpful for that. Okay. Um, I know that, like in Ellicott City, the state of Maryland formed a I'm not going to get all the details right with this, but they formed an organization where people had donated significant money to the response effort. So mm -hmm. they had special tax breaks and special loans the state organized for those companies. So there are additional sort of like emergency related packages that will, I think, come out of a major, major event. Mm -hmm. um, so that's for something that's really severe, but something that is less than I would really recommend the Small Business Administration and checking that and out. And I just looked it up. And they have a whole section on it, and it's just sba.gov forward slash disaster hyphen assistance, and it talks about the insurance and the things that you need. Because I think that that's so important, mm -hmm. and I and I think that people don't. And I know in some instances people had insurance, but because of the incident or whatever the disaster that happened, um, the insurance adjusters couldn't get in. Right. So it's like. Thinking to that level, like yeah. what's the worst that could happen, right, right. and then planning for it, but not spending every waking hour on it. Right, exactly. Which I think is great advice, but just doing enough so that you can just get up and be doing your thing. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with that. I think that's great advice, and I really uh, support, second support checking out that website. Cool. And so we want to thank you all, of course, for joining us on your lunch hour. You have a few minutes to spare, so if you want to get more to eat, you can do that. Um, but we really appreciate you all uh, being here with us this afternoon. Uh, you have Emily Jane's contact information right there in case you need to get in touch. Or feel free also to reach out to us, and we'll make sure that we all connect. And thank you all so much, and have a wonderful rest of your day. And stay tuned for another BizLaunch webinar. Take care, everyone.